spooky season. Today, I'm gonna be reacting to a bunch of terrifying tales of cosplay and conventions, all submitted by the lovely folks over at the Spacecraft Discord. But first, I gotta thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. You know what I think is more terrifying than any of these stories? Blender. I'm still on a mission to conquer the third dimension, so I've been taking this class on 3D Modeling in Blender by Derek Elliott, which includes a walkthrough of the UX and UI, which is great because I swear, every time I open Blender, I forget everything I knew the last time I opened it. But hey, if you want to take a class in UX or UI, Skillshare's got that too, so you could go take that and then come back here and explain to me in detail why Blenders is bad. In fact, Skillshare's got a huge variety of classes on everything from social media to illustration to fine art to animation. So whatever passion you might have or what skills you might be afraid of, Skillshare's there to guide you through it. And the great news is, Skillshare's got a huge deal right now. If you're one of the first 500 people to click the link in my description, you will get the first month free and 40% off an entire year membership of Skillshare. I feel like that's a pretty big deal, so act fast and click that link in the description if you're interested. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let me tell you some terrifying tales. The preface to this says, a guy fell in love with my cosplay and by extension, me. I recently went to a con as Pura from Tears of the Kingdom, and I was a little worried that I would get some activity with her being generally viewed as an attractive character. Luckily, nothing happened for the first two days, and I got a lot of positive responses. Con goers were so sweet. Then there was this guy. He seemed younger than me, so I didn't feel in any danger. He asked for a pic, we took one, and then moved on. And then he kept following me around the con. Mmm, love that. Uh, like, deliberately. I tried to be nice because I figured, hey, I've done this. I've latched to new friends to experience the con together. I'm socially awkward too. I included him the best I could in conversations and even took him to the Zelda meetup where it was a bunch of Zelda cosplayers and this one quiet, lurking, normally dressed guy that only wanted to talk to me and no one else. That's when it started to feel weird, but I brushed it off. Us cosplayers decided to get out of cosplay and go play DDR and Project Diva. I said goodbye to the guy and that was it until a day later. Day after the con, I checked the con's discord to see everyone's cool photos. That's when I got a message request from a brand new member. It was the guy. He was even more awkward in the message and started dropping really obvious hints of a crush. Like telling me he scrolled all the way through my social medias, sharing his Pura fan cams, Wait, people are making fan cams of video game characters now? Am I so old that I wasn't aware of this? Saying he would buy me stuff and even going so far as to quote that I, and even going so far as to quote that I would walk 500 miles for you song. I politely turned him down while freaking out to a close friend about what to do about the situation. I'm very ace, so it scared me a ton. I don't know if I was better or worse equipped to deal with it with my friend helping, also being arrow slash ace, but the situation was successfully simmered down. I guess the moral of the story is cosplayers are not the real character. Yeah. Okay. I will. I will be a bitch and tell people to leave me alone because I don't want people to follow me around, especially men. I used to do a lot of Steven Universe cosplays and I remember there was this guy this one time, and this was very short because like I said, I will be a bitch and just ignore a person until they go away. Guy asked me for a pic. I don't remember what Steven Universe cosplay I was in because I did so many, but he took a picture of me and then started singing the theme song. And I'm like, uh-huh, that's so funny. And I started walking away and he starts following me and singing the theme song. And at that point, I'm just like, mm-hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. My advice for situations like this, yeah, it's really awesome and nice to try to include people, but if you don't in general think that this person is gonna be like your new best friend, sometimes you can make a new best friend at a con and that's awesome, but you don't have to. I don't think you should ever feel like you're a bitch or you've done anything wrong if you do that because you are entitled to your own privacy even in a public space. This next story comes from Anonymous. A few years back, two of my cosplay friends and I signed up to a manga publisher's cosplay contest at a bookstore. The rules said to avoid bot cosplays, but I guess they needed more people so they were lax. My friend and I were mostly going for fun, 
I was dumb enough to decide to cosplay a winter cosplay in June during a heat wave. I nearly had a heat stroke coming into the store because I was in pants, a dress shirt, and a binder. Thankfully, the store had AC, but I was still sweating bullets. But I couldn't see much through my contact lenses and thrifted prescription glasses. I, parentheses, I don't wear glasses. You could take the lenses out of the frames. I had a massive headache from the heat, pressure, and eye strain. We came to find out that the judges were comprised of two employees from the manga publisher and a manga slash anime YouTuber. So basically, no one with judging experience. Not that it would have mattered because only two to three people had entirely handmade cosplays. The rest were either thrifted or modified outfits or good quality bought cosplays. So clearly just here for some fun. You had to use the store escalators to access the makeshift stage. And everyone's audio files were in the wrong order. Oh, so they were like performing. That's, that's a lot for like a bookstore. When we'd finished performing, we waited for the results and the podium was super weird. The two handmade cosplays that were absolutely gorgeous and actual cosplay contest quality placed third and fourth. Second place was my friend who'd handmade her cosplay, albeit less complex, and handmade the lace even. Ooh, handmade lace. That's actually very fancy and not easy to do. Oh, and they sang opera. So their friend got second place with handmade lace and singing opera. Okay, who got first? And first place was the girl we knew was a clout seeker. Oh, <laughs> who'd bought the cheapest version of the show's signature dress from another friend. We were all super confused, not to mention her skit was a scene that had nothing to do with the character's outfit. She later told my friend, whom she often clout leached off, that she was sponsored by the publisher and that's why she'd won. She never received her grand prize though, but neither did anyone else, apart from the prizes the store could provide. So I think we all know that in our world, there exists a whole realm of costume contests or cosplay contests that are not craftsman based. And there's nothing wrong with those existing. In fact, I think those should exist. I think we should have costume contests that are performance based or just like stage presence based. There's lots of those out there, right? And I think those have a place and those are fun and those are a great opportunity for anybody that likes cosplay to get up on the stage and show how much they love their character. But if you're a person that hand makes your cosplays and you like to be judged on the craftsmanship that you put into that cosplay, you might be setting yourself up for a bad time if you choose to enter costume contests that are not craftsman based. Because if your judges are two manga publisher employees and a YouTuber, they're not gonna be able to give you any kind of feedback that might help you grow as a craftsman. And while you probably know that you shouldn't take their opinions too personally, if you end up losing one and you handmade your cosplay, it's gonna feel bad. It, you're not gonna feel good about it. Uh, I personally have a personal rule that if I'm in a handmade cosplay, I won't enter a costume contest that isn't craftsmanship based because I know I would take it personally and that it would hurt my feelings. But if you're interested in like stage presence of cosplay or performance of cosplay, I think those are great venues. The next story comes from Whoa It's Necky on Instagram. This was at 2022 Anime Nebraska Con. That's quite a name, Nebraska Con. And I was signed up for the cosplay competition. This was my second competition I had been in and I was cosplaying Belle from the anime movie Belle. Starting with the small stuff, they had placed a sign in on the other side of the convention hall on the second floor where there was no signage on how to get there and you could only go up there by using a dinghy elevator. I got signed in on time though after spending 30 minutes trying to find it. The next day we had to go in for judging and they were an hour behind schedule and there were so many people sitting in the hall in their large cosplays waiting for their turn. Yeah, um, I've judged and competed in a lot of cosplay competitions and it's almost always behind. They give people time limits, but sometimes the judges just like need time to talk about stuff. So that's pretty common. I was lucky enough to have a handler to get me food and water while I waited, but some people did not. The judges had lots of miscommunication going on, so they were not allowed to take our build books after judging. The day goes on and we finally go backstage to the waiting area. There is a person walking around with an iPad checking to make sure everyone is there. 
He comes up to me and asks my name. I give it to him and he's scrolling through his device to check me in. I think everything is fine and dandy. The show starts 30 minutes late because the event before ran past time. Everyone is nervous and wants to get over with it. All of a sudden, I notice that the music is not matching up with the characters. Sailor Moon is dancing to Attack on Titan! <laughs> KDA Evelyn was posing to Sailor Moon. I start panicking because my character is all about her music and I would not go on stage to anything else. I talk to one of the staff and let them know what's going on and ask them to please make sure my music is right. They say that they're getting it fixed and I needed to go on soon. I go line up and the person asks for my name again and this time they freak out. I wasn't listed in their system. I start freaking out again because people start going in front of me and after 10 people, I hear Belle's music and I get announced on the stage. You better believe I walked on that stage with so much happiness and confidence, it was finally done. Or so I thought. After the stage performances were done, they brought everyone into a smaller room to wait for the judges to make their decision. I respect those poor MCs because everyone had to wait. Everyone had to wait three hours for the judges to be done. Who, who judged this? If you're at all unfamiliar with how costume contests work, there's generally pre-judging. And then if there is a performance aspect, the judges will take a little bit of time to deliberate. A little bit of time. And that little bit of time is usually somewhere between 15 to 30 minutes to maybe, maybe, maybe an hour. Maybe they give them an hour, but I have never heard of judges taking three hours and I have judged lots of things and I have no earthly idea why it would take you three hours to decide on this. Like you had prejudging, you should have already known who your tops were and then it should have been just a quick eek, eek, eek to figure out who was above each other, right? Why would it take three hours? <laughs> and nobody had left to change out of their costume because they didn't even know how long it was gonna take. I was so tired at that point, the judges started listing off the winners and I hear my name. You bet I cried after I called my grandma and had the fattest sleep of my life. But yeah, if you are in a costume contest, it's really, really fun, but it does kind of suck and it is really tiring because especially if you get a really early pre-judging slot and if you're in a cosplay, you can't like easily take off which is my biggest problem with my cosplays, then you're gonna be in that cosplay for like 12 hours maybe, maybe more. And the fact that they made y'all wait three hours to hear the judging results is absolutely wild. And I have no idea why that would happen, but it's not a good thing to happen. This next story comes from Anonymous. So when I made my Trish cosplay from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, I wanted to go all out. Well, when it came to the wig, I ended up really hating my first one. So about a year after making the cosplay, I got a new one. I wanted to go all out on this as well. So I decided to dye the roots darker to add more dimension. I didn't own an airbrush on account of being 16 and broke. So I went with the next best thing. I learned I could use alcohol markers. Well, I didn't have any Sharpies in the color I wanted, but I was part of an AP art student class in high school, which means I have access to a lot of Copic markers. I dyed the roots with the Copic markers and it turned out amazing. The wig was gorgeous and I still get compliments on it because it's so crazy good. Fast forward a few months to con season, my ex-friends and I were doing a JoJo part five group together. It was getting cold out and Trisha's outfit doesn't cover much. So my friend who I was spending the week with, who was cosplaying Bruno, gave me his hand painted jacket to wear. Sweet, right? Well, a note on Bruno's jacket. It's white with a high collar. You might see where this is going, oh no. We all ended up going back to his house after the con to hang out, and that's when disaster strikes. I take off the jacket and the entire back of the collar is stained bright pink. Oh. Along with the back of my neck. Apparently, because the wig hair was in contact with my sweaty neck, all the ink started to run and I didn't realize. So all the wet ink on my neck was soaked into his jacket and it was stained pink forever. Thankfully, my friend was an amazing sport about it. We're not friends now for unrelated reasons, but I still feel terrible for staining his jacket. This is a message to newbies. 
Please heat seal any ink you do on your wigs and do a wash test to get the extra out. Don't be like younger me and stain people's costumes. Yeah, I actually, back in the day, I did a femme Todoroki cosplay and I used a white Arta wig and I Sharpie colored the entire red side of his hair. I didn't seal it. I didn't do anything to it. By the end of the day, I had red on this side and not from the scar. It was just red leaking on my face. So yeah, you can dye wigs with Sharpies, with Copic markers, with alcohol inks, but you gotta be really careful with it and you gotta put it in places that are not in contact with your skin. I don't even know if you seal it. Like, I, th there's probably a way you can seal it, but even then, if you're sweating on it, there's probably always gonna be a chance that it leaks onto you or your costume or worse, Somebody else's costume. <laughs> okay, uh, I said Joe picked these out for me and on some of the links he put notes and this note just says farts, gross. <laughs> this one is from Dolly Doom on Instagram and it says content warning for police. So a few months ago, I was driving home from a local anime convention with my girlfriend who had just gotten a new car. That day I was cosplaying A2 from Nier wearing basically a pleather bikini and a white wig. But my girlfriend wasn't cosplaying. Also important is that something I ate that day was not sitting right. I was gassy. <laughs> There's the farts. Some might even say, releasing demons into that car. <laughs> I happened to live like 20 minutes away from the convention, so it was pretty much a straight shot home on a well-lit road. But there was one minor issue. My girlfriend forgot to turn her headlights on. I didn't know this and neither did she, because we got probably two thirds of the way there before some red and blue started flashing behind us. And no, <laughs> I'm not even there yet, but I'm just thinking, okay. <laughs> You've got a white wigged bikini girl and a normally dressed girl and the car smells like farts. <laughs> Nobody else was really on the road and it was almost 11 o'clock at night and I kind of started to panic because here I was in a pleather bikini and basically hotboxing the vehicle with methane. <laughs> my girlfriend pulled over and rolled down the window while well, I did my best to look the other way and hide my face. Like that was gonna help. I sat in the passenger seat holding my farts while the cop did the whole cop thing, explaining the headlights were off and my girlfriend stayed cool through it all. Go girlfriend. But I was not. <laughs> Farts were building. The cop really didn't acknowledge how I was dressed, but as he turned around and as I thought he would have been far away enough, I unleash the ungodliest, foulest, loudest, seat shaking, rubber burning stank and it echoes. <laughs> I swore that I heard a chuckle coming from the officer. The cop returned. I did not make eye contact. He gave my girlfriend her warning and we drove off while laughing. Oh, I love the amount of descriptors. <laughs> Joe's note for this one was periods. Gross also. Content warning for period blood. At SAC Anime Summer 2023, I wore pink Amina on Friday. I've had a bunch of issues with my body and periods, so I was expecting my period to end as on Thursday, I had no bleeding. So Friday, I woke up on heavy bleeding. So I did my normal diva cup and even added an extra pad and period undies to be safe. Ooh, triple protection. Went to the con and two hours in, I felt like I was leaking. So I went to the bathroom to change and my diva cup overflowed. Pad was full and undies were soaked. Oh no. I had dripped down my leg and skirt at this point and no one noticed as I was wearing a bloody horror character. <laughs> oh, I started to cry in the bathroom and my mom came in clutch with extra pads. Oh, go mom. The bathroom was a horror scene before I cleaned up. When I walked out, there was a young girl, maybe 13, crying at the pad dispenser and looking defeated. So I gave her my extra my mom had brought and she said, thank you. And we had a convo in the bathroom about how to clean the blood off tights as I did it surprisingly well. Then I noticed throughout the con that people started to leave pads and tampons in the bathroom, in the machines in bulk and on the sink, just in case. Clearly, we were not the only ones. Oh yeah, I feel like that happens a lot. Well, I do this too much where I go to a con and I don't bring anything with me to prepare for that. And then I have to bum off friends. That happened at Momocon. 
that happened at Florida Supercon and every single time I've bummed off pins. So thank you pins. But when I did go to Sweden, I had everything, I had everything. And I was on my menstruation cycle in Sweden and nothing leaked because I brought everything. If you are not on the menstrual cup train and you are a person that has a menstrual cycle, absolutely get on the menstrual cup train because they're very good. I'll be TMI too. I have Paragard, and if you have Paragard, you probably know why I bring that up. The next one comes from the Death Arcana, who is one of our wonderful mods on the spacecraft. In 2016, my best friend wanted to enter the cosplay masquerade at our local con with a Legend of Zelda skit slash dance. Out of our group of eight, construction fell to the three of us who had previous cosplay experience. The whole process of making all of our costumes ended up being a mess and resulted in some of our pieces being god awful. Start of the competition day. Some of our group is panicking. I ended up spilling spirit gum over one of the other Link's tunics while applying their ears. Oh. I end up staining the tunic. That's why I like the, uh, I don't use spirit gum on ears. I will use the 3M transport tape and just like wrap it around. It works really well and you don't have to wait for the glue to dry and you don't have to risk spilling spirit gum. After staining the tunic, I had a brief meltdown and cry in the hallway, thinking I had just ruined everything. But after a pep talk from one of the other members of our skit, I was ready to go on with everyone. I will also say, if you are in a costume contest and day of you spill something on your cosplay, just tell the judges. Like having a coffee stain or a spirit gum stain does not take away from any of the work you put into making that cosplay. Uh, some judges out there might be bad judges and take away points for that, but I personally would never put somebody down a peg just for spilling coffee on themselves. Like accidents happen. Anyway, after the pep talk, we all started walking from our hotel room to the con, which is about three miles away. And this is where I really began to feel my mistakes. I was cosplaying Twilight Princess Link, and in the game, he clearly has a layer of chainmail. Being my extra teenage self at the time, I decided against using a shirt that looked like chainmail and opted for making the real thing out of 14 gauge steel wire. Under the chainmail, I had a long sleeve shirt, which I believe was made of a synthetic material because that did not breathe at all. I also had yet to use foam, so my Hylian shield was made out of solid wood. Oh God. With three layers, heavy chain mail, and an old ace bandage binding method. No, not the old ace bandage binding method. And a heavy shield on my back. It was a struggle to walk to the con, I bet. In normal weather, this probably would have been fine, but it was the middle of July during a heat wave. I started to get a headache and getting dizzy before we even reached the con, but I didn't say anything to the rest of the group because I could see how much fun they were all having, so I ignored it. We get to the con and get stopped for pictures a lot along the way, so I started having more fun, but the headache was really intensifying. Even though we were in an air-conditioned space, the con is so crowded that it still feels almost as hot as it was outside. After tech rehearsal, I finally finally said something to my best friend about the headache. It has been about three hours at this point since it started. So we sat down on the floor backstage. One of the master's contestants saw that I wasn't feeling well and they offered the couch in their dressing room backstage. Why do the master's contestants get a couch and you don't? My friend and I went in there and I throw off my wig until it's time to go on stage. As soon as I put my wig back on, my vision starts to go blurry, but I'm too stubborn to quit. I don't remember how our skit went nor do I remember most of the other acts afterwards. The whole time I could barely see and I had to fight to stay conscious as my vision was starting to go into tunnel vision and also fight not to throw up as I was starting to feel nauseous too. Apparently I was just lying down on the cold concrete floor backstage for the remaining hour and a half of the show. After everything was done, my friends found a wheelchair for me and wheeled me to the outside paramedics where the paramedics told me I probably had heat exhaustion or heat stroke. I knew the ambulance would be too expensive. So my friends took me back to the hotel room and fed me cold water and Gatorade. And that is how my first convention experience went. Moral of the story, hydrate, try to cosplay in climate appropriate clothing, and listen to your body. Joe's, uh, Joe's note for this one, it just says poop. 
And then there is a content warning for poop. I'm 12. I'm excited to read this one. Okay, this one is from, I didn't put their Discord name in the document. So this one is from somebody in the Discord. Three friends and I took a road trip to Fanime a decade ago. We check into our room and met up with the fifth person who I had never met. We'll call him S. But a couple others had been friends with him. There would be five of us cramped into this room, totally normal for the con scene in 2013. I would say in 2013, that was probably a low capacity room. We get to the con, spend the evening getting badges and F's, I can't keep saying S, so I'm gonna call him Sam. We spend the evening getting our badges and then Sam breaks off to go to a party while the rest of us headed out for dinner. The four of us ended up having dinner with a pair of cool ladies and I split off to go around with them while my three friends retired to the room. The three of us hang out and they offer to let me crash in their room since it was now 2 a.m. and we assumed everyone was asleep. And then my phone rings just as we're lights out and it's my friend, R. We're gonna call R, uh, Rhonda. Max, you need to come back to the room. <laughs> Max, you need to come back to the room. There's shit on the floor. I thank the two ladies and excuse myself. I walked back to the room thinking there might be a leak from the room above or something spilled and I get to the room and Rhonda is sitting in the hall, silent. I walk in and I see the floor. Next to the bed, a perfect spiral chocolate soft serve. <laughs> Sam had apparently partied too hard and didn't realize he wasn't on the toilet. There was even a small bit of collateral damage on Rhonda's suitcase. Poor Rhonda. I called the front desk to send up some bleach and then spent the rest of the night talking to R who bore witness. Bore witness? <laughs> Bear witness. And wanted to go home. She ended up staying and we had a great con otherwise. And we all became hyper aware of how often we said shit in normal conversation. Never saw Sam after that first night, but he did give Rhonda $200 for the suitcase. The weirdest thing to me was the look of total indifference on the housekeeper's face. She'd seen worse. That one was great. <laughs> well, hopefully we can all learn from some of the lessons of the mistakes made in a lot of these stories. And to end the video, I will give you a very hard lesson that I had to learn at a con this past year. This is the story of how I accused a man of stealing and got yelled at. At Florida Supercon, and yes, I cut this entire thing out of the vlog because at the time, I, I didn't want to edit it. I didn't want this to be in the content because it was honestly kind of traumatic. But basically what happened was I had a booth and this was my first ever booth. So there was a lot of stuff to learn anyway. And I wasn't really selling anything at my booth. So I didn't really have anything to worry about people stealing. Prior to going to Florida Supercon, there were all these stories that had just come out about how people were stealing stuff at Anime Expo in LA. So that was sort of top of my mind was people stealing stuff. And like I said, I didn't have anything at my booth for people to steal, but Dova Designs, who was right next to me, had all these beautiful little handmade uh, sculptures and jewelry pieces all sitting at the front of the booth. So there was a number of things to my side that I was for some reason personally worried about getting stolen. So what ended up happening was I was at my booth, Pins was there too, and Dova and her assistant had gone off to lunch. So no one was at their booth. Dova had not asked anyone to watch the booth while they were gone, but in my mind, I'm like, I'm right here. I'm keeping an eye on that booth because this is my new friend. So then this, older man walks up and he gets real close to the booth. He's as close to the booth as I am to this table right here. And in my head, I'm thinking that's, that's really sus because there's no one at that booth. Like if there's no one at a booth, you probably shouldn't be getting really close to it. Or at least, I don't know, I'm like paranoid that people will think I'm stealing. So if no one's at a booth, I don't even go near it. Cause I don't want people to think I'm doing something wrong, but he was really close to the booth. And so I'm like side-eyeing him. I'm like watching him like this. And then I see him do this. He picks something up and then he put his hand in his pocket. That's what I saw him do. I don't know if he picked it up and then somehow put it down and then put his hand in his pocket, but I saw him pick something up 
and then put his hand in his pocket. And I said, sir, I saw that. And he flipped the f out on me, yelling at me, screaming at me. He turns his pockets inside out. Nothing falls out of his pockets, so I don't even know if he actually stole something. But he takes everything out of his pockets, takes his wallet out of his pockets, takes everything out of his pockets and turns them inside out. And then he's like, you want me to take my f***ing pants off? And I'm like, I saw you put your hand in your pocket. He calls me a bitch and he f leaves. And I start crying because I have the awful quality that I feel like I have to stand up for something that's right. But as soon as confrontation comes, I'm just like tears. I can't do it. That is the awful dichotomy that is me. I don't actually know if he stole something. His behavior was definitely suspicious, but sir, I saw that definitely escalated the situation higher than it needed to be. And I have learned that if you are at a booth and you see somebody at another booth who's being suspicious, just say something like, oh, they'll be back in an hour. Cause what that tells that person is I am currently watching you and I am watching this booth. And it gives them that warning prior to them doing anything suspicious that they're being watched and they cannot steal anything because they are being watched. So heed my warning and do not wait for the old white man to do something actually suspicious. Tell him you're watching him before he tries to steal something, if he stole something. But yeah, that's my horror story. Hopefully you can learn some lessons from my mistakes and everybody else's mistakes. And if you have your own cosplay horror story, you can leave it in the comments down below. That's all I got for this video. If you want to support the channel directly, you can check out my Patreon, where you'll get a whole bunch of exclusive content, and you can buy merch on my bonfire. There's a link down below. I have cute designs. You can get one. There's a spooky one, and there's a bunch of cute ones. So check it out. And that also supports the channel directly too. But if you're just watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, or sending the video to your friend or your mom, or subscribing, then you're supporting the channel too. So thank you. And before I go, I know a couple months ago I did announce that I was going to get to go to Idolfest, but I didn't tell you what I'm making for Idolfest yet. So would you like to know what I have been spending all of my time making and will be spending all of my time making until December? It's not quite furry, but it is Moto Fuato Lala. to the patrons willow redwood bunny clown supreme danielle gumdrops cost bunny azure kate joey white rabbit cosplay hachi sweet specter still beating heart of jeff gordon aka my mom nicole fox moss the demon dude donna a bit of cake shay camille ethan maple fran cakes red rover dose peste at calera darian gassy peppers i have been saying that as grassy pep pep oh i said it wrong still it's gassy peepers I've been saying this person's name wrong and I am sorry to them. Anyway, Tiny Wyvern, Polite Crow asking if you might kindly open the bins for a little rummage. Bee Man, Elias, Lot of Bees, Tear Bear, Ray Zach, Sophie, Savannah, Hemi Dairy, Cosplay, Cookie, Honeybean, Brittany, Lena, Butter, Shelly, Lay, Corden, Nora, Lollipop, Jester, Marshy, Tootie, Fruity, Kelly, Spooky Kitsune, Cosplay, Luxurious Cosplay, Jennifer, Abby, Lily, Lunar Lepis Cosplay, Crodelia, Crodelia? Crodelia, tell me how you say your name. Sherry, Hadil, No Roman, LOL, Katie, Amai Jelly, Lady Blue Cosplay, Hania, Fake Smiley, Seven, Sebastian, Amar, Simrel, Matcha Kit Kat, Walter, Stephanie, Mo, Jodi, Coconuts, Nightwolf, Bingus Owl, Alora Polaris Cosplay, Aaron, Tomaki Potato, Gabby Bear, Jesse Chu, Sarah, Another Zip Tie, Hazel, Alec, Jenny, Lady Senshi, Rembulan Cosplay, Jenna, Kazmira, Rory, Astrofox, Kimberly, Tam Tam the Tailor, Nanayru, Legfish, Amanda, Connie, Paul, GT Cosplay, Zihibi, Cal, Sansuffle, Flare, Rhine Like Wine, Alyssa, Queen Platypus, Foxy McLoxy, Taylor, Tessa Bow, Shell, Alyssa, 
Melissa, Akima Aki, Chibi Lise, Rainbow Lola, Gloomshroom, Infinite Salad, Sephestra, Kelly, Hubasta, Magna, Chai, Alba and Brent, Sleepy Ellie, Audrey, Ben, Spacey Stitches, Coco Yumi, Skasa, Ariana, Articus the Tigolf, Minor, Food Penguin, Emmy, Alyssa, Katie, Experimental Blue, Toby, Alice, Rebecca, Slushbuff, aka Corn Copy, Samantha, Adriana, Amber, Kim, Saigni Cosplay, Kaimatsu, Block Kitty DJ, Meredith, Sarah, Cowbones, Lunar, Gaia, Lularash Cosplay, Marcy, So Into Music, Julian, Cam, Zen, Andrew, Pin, Snip, and Clark. Oh.